In this video, we are going to look into some common Z transform pairs. So we are basically interested in taking uh, the transform of some very common signals and then these common signals are basically uh, used in more involved transformations or usually in the inverse Z transforms. So let us look into the first case that is delta of n. So we know that x of z is simply a summation x of n z minus n and the summation is from minus infinity to infinity. Now this input or x of n say if this is a delta function so hence we have a summation delta of n z minus n but from the property of delta function the delta function is only available at time instant 0 for all other values it is 0. So any signal which is multiplied by delta of n would also be available only when time instant is 0. So hence delta of n this would convert to z raised to power minus 0 because this would only be available at time instant 0. But this is simply 1 because z raised to power 0 is 1 and the summation from here to here minus infinity to infinity is also giving us only one value of delta n which is 1 and so this is also 1 right so hence x of z is 1 and it is independent of z so it is for all values of z note that all of this is basically a property of delta of n that is if you have delta of n and if you're multiplying it with any function say h of n so the outcome would be delta of n times h of 0 that is now it is only existing at time 0 so similarly from 1 we can easily drive uh, the fourth signal delta of n minus 1 so this would be shifted to mth unit and similarly this is now z dash for minus m however for the ROC it is very important to know the value of m whether it's positive or negative so for positive values of m this would be having z raised for minus m m is positive so this would be of the form z m now for this to converge m cannot be zero now two and three are linked with five and six that is if you set a equal to one in five and six you will fall back to two and three Moreover, the proof of 5 and 6 is given in another video, the chord of which is shown now. Now, for the proof of 7th pair, say we have x of n and it has a z transform x of z. Now, from the differentiation in the z domain, that is the property of differentiation in the z domain, if we have d by dz x of z, and we multiply it with minus z this has an inverse pair as n x of n so say this is our x of n and it is multiplied with n now alpha n u of n we already know its transform which is 1 over 1 minus a z inverse or simply we can say this is simply z over z minus alpha so then this would have a z transform from here that is we would have d by dz z over z minus alpha and then minus z so if this was g of n so this is simply g of z now the differentiation of this rational function is straightforward the denominator would be squared so we would differentiate with this and multiply with this so this will become 1 times z minus alpha minus now we would differentiate this and then multiply with z so this would become 1 times z now from here this is a plus z and this is a minus z so they would cancel off and this minus and this minus would multiply to become positive so we would have a z over z minus alpha whole square and if you multiply and divide this by z square we are going to reach this pair
now again using the differentiation property and using pair 6 we can also drive this pair now for 9 10 11 and 12 you can observe that 9 and 10 these two are the special cases of 11 and 12 because if you set r equal to 1 so this whole thing for r equal to 1 would converge to 9 so that is cos omega naught n u of n this is appearing over here so similarly for 12 this is a general form and its special case when r is equal to 1 is appearing over here which is 10 so let us work on the proof of 11th and this will suffice all of these proofs because a similar approach can be used to obtain the remaining three of them so we have now x of n equal to or n cos omega naught n and u of n now from the Euler's identity we can break the cos function into exponential so we would have 1 by 2 or n e j omega naught n u of n plus 1 by 2 or n e minus j omega naught n u of n you can notice that this is a form that is very very similar pair number 5 that is this pair alpha n u of n so hence we can say 1 by 2 or e j omega naught n u of n we can term this as alpha 1 plus 1 by 2 or e minus j omega naught and u of n hence so from pair 5 we can achieve the z transform that is x of z would be 1 by 2 so we would have z over z minus or e j omega naught and the absolute value of z is greater than the absolute value of r e j omega naught but note that the absolute value of e j omega naught or exponential complex exponential is always one that is e j theta absolute value is always one so as we can say that our absolute value of z is greater than absolute value of r and similarly for the second part again we have z over z minus or e minus j omega naught and the r of c again is z greater than absolute value of r that is if this is plus or minus it is still one now taking the lcm of these two so we simply have one by two z minus r e j omega naught times z minus r e minus j omega naught and in the numerator this z would be multiplied with this so we would have z square minus z r e minus j omega naught plus multiplying this z with this so again we would have z square so this would become 2z square and then this z would multiply it with this part and you would have z r plus e plus j omega naught now multiplying this with the numerator so we have z square minus z r 1 by 2 e minus j omega naught plus e plus j omega naught and similarly in the denominator we would have z square minus z or these two terms that is e minus j omega naught plus e plus j omega naught plus this into this term so that would be r square times e plus j omega naught minus j omega naught now this is the definition of a cos function this is equal to cos omega naught n so hence we have z square minus z or cos omega naught similarly in the denominator 
we have z square minus now this if we divide by 2 and multiply by 2 again we can convert it into a cos function so we would have 2 z or cos omega naught plus exponential of e plus g omega naught minus g omega naught so this becomes 0 so exponential of 0 is 1 so we would simply have r square so now we can extract out the z square so this would become 1 minus r cos omega naught z minus 1 over 1 minus 2r cos omega naught z minus r square z minus 2 so we had taken z square out of both the numerator and the denominator so they would cancel off and eventually this result concludes the proof given over here